I'm so excited and I'm so nervous and I'm so flabbergasted and I'm elated. I feel like I'm gonna make up a word. I'm just so flumbustuized right now. Put that in the dictionary. I'm flumbustuized right now. I'm so thankful to be here. Can we elevate the atmosphere for a moment and give God an agape praise? Not a church praise, not a Christian praise, an agape praise. You can't get an agape praise anywhere else but in agape. Come on, five, se- five Puerto Rican seconds. That's five times two. Give God some praise for all that he's done, everything that he's doing. And I dare you right now with faith to let heaven know and let hell know we're praising God for all that he's about to do in this house, in our lives in our families, in our finances, in our children, and our businesses, in our future endeavors. The devil can't stop what God has already ordained to go, and the enemy cannot curse what God has already blessed. And we are blessed, and the devil can't do anything about it. Amen. Somebody say amen. Slap your neighbor upside the head. I mean, tap your neighbor with some grace and say, I'm so glad that you made it to the house today. I am not by myself. I am with my chocolate queen. She will always be my chocolate queen. My first lady and my only lady. I don't have another wife in India or in Fiji. It's all her. It will always be her. It has always been her. Hallelujah! I feel the anointing flowing already. That's my baby, uh, Jennifer. And the left one, wait, one, one time I came here and I had my little short stack of a daughter about yay high, sing a song. And now she's 112 years old, <laughs> six foot 13 and a half. And she's here with me. She's not going to sing. I didn't prepare her for that. She already lifted up her left eyebrow and said, no, Dad. But I'm so glad that my family's here. My son is here, too, with his Rico Suave hair. I used to have hair like that, but it's not as smooth as his. Amen. And I have some people from the fountain with us as well. I have my brother Hendrick and his beautiful wife, Anid. When he first came to our church, I thought he was from Trinidad, but he's straight up Dominicano. (laughs) Amen. And uh, we have our brother Al. Amen. He's with us. That's my brother from another mother. He's an Italian Pentecostal man of God. And his wife, Diane, check this out. She's Polish and Puerto Rican. So Al says she's Puerto Rican. We all, we come in different shapes, colors, and sizes. Um, We salute the uh, and honor the set man of this house. We thank God for Pastor Powell. We thank God for his obedience, his life, and his sacrifice. And if you're watching now or later, we pray that the Lord blesses you and places a favor that surrounds you like a shield, sir. Wherever you may be, whatever the Lord is calling you to do in this season and this moment, we cover you that the angels of God will protect you and God would use you in everything that you do with a spirit of excellence in Jesus' name. He'll come back and share some great testimony soon of what God is doing. And I don't know about you, but I'm asking the Lord that he can just give me the same anointing that he has so that I be- when I become 60, I can look like him as well. My father's about to be 80 years old, and he's a very dark-skinned Puerto Rican. So when someone says, you look good, he says, you know why, right? Because black don't crack. I'm not as dark as him. I'm caramel, so I can say beige don't age. God is good. We celebrate 6035. Can you celebrate God? Amen. The accomplishment of agape, 35 years in the making started in a garage and now you are in this amazing campus you don't owe nothing to nobody come on amen amen 
And because we are celebrating 35 years, um, the Lord placed a word in my heart that I would like to share with you today. Amen. So I would like for you to open up your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 9. Excuse me. Yes. Follow this. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, 13, and 14. When you have it, say amen. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, 13, and 14. For those that are watching online, get your Bibles out, except if you are writing in your car. Uh, don't do that. Just listen and receive. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, 13, and 14. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the Bible reads in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blame, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Verse 13, and God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. 14, make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and outside with pitch. Uh, may I add to your consideration one more verse, verse 22. Noah did everything. Somebody say everything. everything. You know, uh, everything in Greek and in Hebrew, you know what it means? It means everything. Uh, Pastor Powell told me, don't get too deep because deep people end up drowning. <laughs> Noah did everything just as God commanded him for these next few moments I would love to speak to you over the topic and the title get ready and build get ready and build after 35 years the Lord is calling us to continue to build upon this foundation amen would you look at the person next to you and say get ready I want you to say this in Spanish say it in Spanish look at your neighbor roll your R's and say preparate not preparate say preparate Father, we ask you that you would speak expressively through your word to our minds and to our hearts. We ask you for these next few moments that we have with each other that your Holy Spirit would flow, that the anointing would be present to destroy the yoke. Father, I thank you for the quickness of mind, Lord Jesus, the precision of speech, Father, that we would speak your word, Lord, without addition or subtraction. I thank you for the anointed and the anointing. In the name of Jesus and the people of God said amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, preparate. Uh, when the Lord calls us to prepare ourselves, we see something here in 1 Corinthians. I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. And there we see that Paul is writing to the church of Corinth, and he's writing like a father that is concerned to his children with a list of certain things that we must be aware of in order for us to position and posture ourselves in a place of readiness, in a place of preparation. Because the enemy will always try to bring distraction when we are not paying attention and this is the season where we cannot afford to be looking at everything else but to keep your eyes on Jesus the Bible says not to look into your left or look into your right but look over the hills where your help comes from that's a, a sign here because the enemy will always try to bring distractions to the things that are closest to you the things that are very small and insignificant. But stop looking at the small things and keep your eyes on Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, keep your eyes on Jesus. <laughs> First Corinthians says, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous and be strong. And Paul here is commanding the church to have a list here of instructions to be preparado, to be prepared. Number one, he says, I want you to keep your eyes open. I want you to watch and pray and stand on your guard. These are the two things that stand out to me. Be watchful and be on your guard. Watchful is I need for you to be proactive. And in this is the season, I feel like this is a prophetic word for this house. Be watchful, be proactive, and be discerning. Because there's a lot of things that the enemy's trying to creep into your house. Hallelujah. 
And God, for many of us, are waking us up in the middle of the night uh, to show you the things that the enemy is not doing, but what the enemy is about to do. Because many of us don't need another revival in the church. Many of us need a revival in our homes. Because the enemy's not attacking you at agape, he's attacking you in your living room. And the next time the Spirit of God wakes you up, God is saying, I want you to wake up and get on your knees. Stop looking at the other side or the cold side of the pillow. Get on your knees because some of us are asking for anointing, but we're not ready to prepare ourselves for what real comes. Because the anointing comes with responsibility. Ah, Lord Jesus. He said, be watchful, be proactive, and be discerning. Because God's about to expose the strategy of the enemy over your house. Guard your heart, though. Guard your heart. Don't agree with and don't pour yourself out over everything just for the sake of acceptance. When God calls you and has you walk in the anointing, you can't just be friends with everybody. Could, it, could, could somebody talk back to me in this house? I'm not telling you to isolate or separate yourself, but I'm telling you be careful with who is coming in your inner circle because people will come for either two reasons, to either bless you or to curse you. I came to let somebody know in this house, be careful, watch out, have some discernment, and if you don't have it, ask God for discernment. Get ready and build. Because there's going to be people that have the assignment to detour you from building. See, see, for some of us, we're scared to build, but God is already saying your foundation is already set. If Pastor Powell is your pastor and Agape is your church, your foundation is already ready. God is just waiting for you to build. Stop looking at everybody else, build. Stop criticizing everyone else for building. And you start building. I'm going to talk more about this. But then he says, stand firm in your faith. Don't sway. Don't lower your standards. Don't, don't, don't do that because the enemy, in order for him to hold us back from building, if he can't mess you, mess with you with a... Blessing, excuse me, if he can't mess with you with a curse, he'll try to distract you with a counterfeit blessing. Why, why is the Lord taking me this way? Be careful we, because the enemy will now in this season try to detain you, discourage you, discombobulate you with opportunities that has not come from God. Be careful with opportunities that look good and smell good. Uh, discernment will tell you it looks good, but it's not God. I, I, I've been through too much, and I'm getting older now, and I'm not attracted and responding to things that are looking good because good is not enough. In this season of my life, I don't want good. I want God. I want God. So be careful with that next opportunity because the enemy says, if I can't mess you with the things of the world, I'll mess you with some opportunities that look like God. He says, steadfast and be immovable. In other words, he's saying, in order for us to get ready, we have to be consistent. Here's another word for consistency. It's okay to be stubborn sometimes. To stand your ground and say, Lord, you told me that this is mine, and I don't care what the atmosphere tells me to feel or what haters are telling me. If God, if God told you this is yours, I'm not moving unless God moves. And just like Moses said, if you don't go, I'm not going either. Can we build this? Can we talk through this? He said, be courageous, be strong. Because you're going to face some oppositions from the culture around you. Stand. The reason why agape is still agape is because we're still standing. We're not swaying to the things of this world. Are you here? Somebody say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say get ready. Amen. I'm going to talk with you because when, when we say we're getting ready, getting ready is the evidence that 
you have enough faith that something great is about to come. Getting ready is faith in action and not just verbiage. Getting ready saying, I need to prepare myself now for what's coming. It's like rearranging the furniture of your room because there is a big delivery coming. We're moving some things to the side because what is here is not as important as what's coming. And many of us, God is already telling us to start rearranging some stuff in your life. Make some space. And the moment we start making space, the enemy will whisper in your ear to say, look how empty you are. Look, the devil is a liar. When that moment comes and the enemy says you're empty, I want to let you know you are not empty. You have space because what God is about to do requires some space. It requires some space. Getting ready for what's coming is not based on your past. It's based on what God is about to do in your future. The enemy will never attack you because of where you came from. The enemy attacks you because he smells greatness in your future. My God, it's not about what's been done, but it's about what's about to happen. Because whatever diabolical situation that some of us are going through right now, whatever's taking your sleep away, it's not over your past. It's over the prophetic word that the Lord has placed over your life and over your children's life. Some parents here today, you're going through it, not because of you, but because of what God has placed in you for your children. The enemy will never waste his time fighting you because of your past. He's fighting you because of your future, because of God's promises. He's fighting because you're growing. He's fighting because you're pregnant with anointing. He's fighting you because you are not who you used to be. He's fighting you because you're not going to be who you are right now. He's fighting you because there's better in front of you and there's better inside of you. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm stronger now than what I was before. That's why the end, matter of fact, the enemy fights you, and that right there is a confirmation that you're closer to your blessing than ever before. Is there anybody in this house today that can say amen to the fact that I'm closer now than I've ever was before? This is how sovereign our Savior is, my God in this house. He'll use the enemy to bless you while he thinks he's cursing you. He thinks he's discombobulating you, but it's actually a setup for God to bless you up. Touch your neighbor and say, don't quit in the attack. Don't, don't, don't quit in what's not working because God has a way. God is sneaky. God is sovereign. He has a way of just catching you and say, I am going to turn around what the enemy meant for evil. God, God, God. God is about to turn it around for the good. The enemy thinks he's pushing you to crisis, but what is really happening is that he's pushing you through Christ. I'm not in crisis. I'm in Christ. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature for the old things have passed away and everything else is made new. Somebody say new is coming. Get ready, though. Sometimes the enemy's attacks indicates new seasons. I remember when I was a kid, I said, Lord, use me. And God said, are you sure? Because it comes with a package. And the things that we're asking from God might not match our capacity to hold pain. I remember years ago, I preached to you that message, the, 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 the pain of revival. And what is your capacity of pain? Sometimes, again, the attack of the enemy is an indication of a new season. He attacks either right before or after a blessing. I want you to remember this. He attacks either before a season of a blessing or right after a season of the of the blessing so so without the enemy even really knowing this he's trying to kill us but he's actually catapulting us into a new season 
Some of us are waiting to hear confirmation from the pulpit, but God is using pain to confirm to you that there's a shift coming. Ah, oh my God, there's a, there's a shift coming. Don't worry about tomorrow, though. Prepare for it. I told my daughter and my son, we're going to Agape. They start at 2 o'clock in the morning. They love Jesus. I had to say that because my kids take a long time getting ready. A long time getting ready. And, 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 and I had to tell them, get ready now. Take out your clothes Saturday night. Get your hair ready and put it in a bun so that when you wake up, bring, it's ready. Do that, do that now. Don't worry about tomorrow. I remember Pastor Powell saying once worrying is considered to be a sin because it suggests that God is incapable of doing what he said. So don't worry about tomorrow. Prepare for tomorrow. Don't worry. Don't, don't be weary in doing well because in due time you will reap if you faint not. Don't fear. Plan for this. Walk this out. Walk this through. Don't start with the intention of not finishing this because many of us want blessings but we quit when things get frustrated listen I wish I can tell you you'll never be offended when you come to church but you will be offended when you come to church people will in unintentionally and maybe intentionally offend you but God says can you take that pain can you forgive can you learn how to let go? Can you learn how to turn the other cheek? Can you learn how to love God more than you hate people? Can you, can you love God until your hate turns to love for people? Don't tell me you want ministry and you love God, but you hate people. No, no, you got to love the people of God. You can't love the crowd and hate the people. You got to love the people of God. Be intentional because God's about to open up the visions, the horizons of your vision and if you wait to see everything clearly you'll never make a decision to get ready we get ready because God got ready are you here today we get ready because God God is a prepared God for a prepared people throughout the scripture you see how God has prepared for us and therefore we have to prepare for him John chapter 14, verse 3, the Bible says, I go and prepare a place for you. He is proactive. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. God is preparing for you. Psalms 23 and 5 is a very familiar passage of scripture where the Bible says, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I'm setting you up so that they can see you eat as well. I'm setting you up so that every hater and every backbiter and every person that expected for you to fall and fail and abort your promise, they're going to see you be blessed. Look, you don't even have to show your haters your blessing. The food speaks for itself. The table speaks for itself. Sit down, relax, take a chill pill because God has a blessing and the blessing has its own mouth. Stop trying to prove to your haters, look what God is doing in my life shut your cute mouth and keep putting God first and the blessing has a mouth and God is about to raise the volume and every hater is gonna have to look at you and not get mad but look at you and say if God was able to do it for them I want God to do it for me talk to me talk back to me somebody Either, either you learn how to sit down or God will make you sit down. Because in the same chapter, the Bible says that I'm going to make you lie down in green pastures. If you don't know how to relax, if you don't know how to be confident and stop. See, when I, I'm a Pentecostal young man, I was born and raised in a Pentecostal background. I know, I know that we've been all talking about Pentecost last Sunday, but, but they taught me how to fight. They taught me how to rebuke. They taught me how to prophesy. They taught me how to lay hands. They, they taught me how to walk in authority. But what they didn't teach me is to learn how to stand still. 
I know how to prophesy, but God says, this is the season where you just got to close your mouth. So it's hard for some of us to close our mouth. Don't look at your neighbor. They, they, they might get offended and tell you something because they can't close their mouth. Just laugh so that they don't know we're talking about you. <laughs> I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Revelations actually says something about this as well. About a holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from heaven, prepared by God for us. If God prepares for us, then we must prepare for him. Pre means before. Pair is to cut like a paring knife. He'll cut you and shape you for the blessing. If you think that God is preparing the blessing for you, you're sorely mistaken. He's preparing you for the blessing. Many of us are waiting for the anointing, but we don't fit in the shape that God has already predestined for us. And there's some things that he needs to trim off of your life in order for you to fit the blessing that is coming. There's some fat to be trimmed. Uh, please don't be a little offended by what I just said, because God now is saying, I love you enough to cut you just a little bit. I'm not cutting you to kill you. I'm cutting you to purge you. Because the enemy has placed some things attached onto you that, that if your attitude comes into this new anointing, you will pollute the new anointing. Oh, there, there ain't no attitudes up in here? Oh, you just all anointed and, and, and y'all talking tongues up here but don't feel like cursing somebody in the parking lot? Nah, y'all don't do that up here in Agape. You don't do that up here. But God is saying, in order for me to fit you, see, I've already shaped it for what you're about to become. I know the end from the beginning. I see you in your tomorrow, and you look so much better than you do right now. And one of the great Old Testament illustrations is Noah. Hebrews talks about Noah as well. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. The Bible says that by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things yet seen, moved with godly fear and reverence. He prepared an ark, the Bible says, for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. We are introduced to Noah here in this particular passage of scripture as an illustration of faith as an illustration of obedience in work or at work here is Genesis chapter 6 God here is moving on the earth but there's something wrong on the earth he's moving on the earth but what's happening is that the quality and the state of humanity is polluted by people that are going against God. Going against God. They sinned and iniquity. Sin means missing the mark. Iniquity means I'm doing it on purpose and I don't care about what you say. That's what iniquity is. So there were some in sin missing the mark. Others were purposefully going against God's will in iniquity. People turned from God. Their hearts were evil. And in the middle of this perverse generation, God still speaks. I'm so thankful that God still speaks when we don't even deserve to hear his voice. I'm so thankful that there's still a remnant of people in the house of God that will stand up and say, even if everyone else goes against God's ways and God's will, me and my family, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. And through their, their immorality in the midst of lying and killing and blasphemy and vulgarity, God speaks to Noah because there was some Something different about Noah. I had to look into what was it about Noah that God chose him above anyone else in his generation. The Bible says that Noah walked with God. Mm -hmm. 
He walked with God like when no one else was walking with God. He was not conforming to the culture in his, in his generation. Everyone else was walking one way and he was not scared. He had the audacity to walk against the current. Oh, that's the anointing. That, that's leadership. That is what God is looking for. God is looking for someone that is willing to go against the currents of this world. He didn't conform. He wasn't doing what everybody else was doing in this pre-post and Christian era. The Bible says that Noah was two things. The Bible says that Noah was just and he was righteous. Another version says that Noah was perfect. Uh, use the same word for Job. And perfect doesn't mean that he's never made a mistake because if that was the case, all of us would never be able to be used by God and we will not go to heaven. But the Bible's not talking about perfection of you never making a mistake. But the meaning of perfect here in Hebrew means mature and complete. So it gives us an idea of what God is looking for. God is looking not for someone that has position or prestige. He's not looking for someone that has the Gucci loafers and the fake Louis Vuitton. Put it down. Don't even lift it up because you know it's fake. Let me stop. God is, not looking, God is not looking for those people that can articulate messages very clearly. God is not looking for people that got money in their bank account and, and, and look very handsome. God is not looking for the anointing on the altar because I know people that have the anointing, but they're still disobedient and they still have an attitude. God is looking for someone that is mature and complete. God is looking for someone that is mature. Look at your neighbor and say, you hear what God is looking for? Ah. He's looking for Noah. Noah was a man that lived with integrity and with character. He walked with God. He was on the same page that God was in. Walking with God simply means someone that pleases God. You know, I told, the, I told my wife the other day, I said, I know that I make God smile. And sometimes with my sense of humor, I know that I make God laugh. God laughs with me. He just gave me something that my wife laughs. She has abs because I'm always making her laugh. But I know that God laughs with me. Walking with God means that you make God smile. Nothing pleases God more than to see someone walking by faith. I don't know what the next step is, but I know that God got me. I'm moving. That's God's language. We got to learn how to speak God's language. Walking with God means that I'm putting him first in everything that I'm doing. Walking with God means that I'm looking to him for direction and not to people and not to myself. I'm looking, I'm looking to him and to the people of God that the Lord has placed in my life. God, the Bible says, trusted and chose to speak with him. God trusts. God trusted Noah? Wow. C can I ask you a question? I, I know if I ask you if you trust God, many of you would hopefully say yes. But here's the question. Can God trust you? Do you have that character that builds credit with God through a line of obedience where God can say, I trust my child. Because when God trusts you, there's two types of people. There's people that say, Lord, I won't move until you confirm it three times, speak about it in the word, and then make me feel good about it. And when God does it, then I'll move. But then there's other people that God says, I trust you so much that whatever move you make is already going to be in my will. Not if, that's not for everybody. Be careful. Don't say amen. It's not for everybody. But there's some people that have a line of credit with God that God trusts you to say, whatever decision you make, I'm going to back it up. Wherever you go, you're going to be there with me. Hallelujah. Can God trust you? I know you're anointed, but are you dependable? My Lord. I know you can sing, but are you reliable? I know you like collecting the offerings, but have you tithed? I'm not talking about you, my brother. I'm not talking about 
I know, I know you can preach, but are you consistent? Are you faithful? Are you loyal? Can, because God trusts those that don't quit when it doesn't go the way they expect it to go. See, I know you act faithful when God gives you a yes, but how do you act when God gives you a no? How do you act when God closes the doors on purpose? Can you still worship him? Can you still trust him? God says, I want you to get ready. He said, Noah, I want you to build an ark. I want you to build an ark. Uh, the ark was not built just for him. He said, I want you to build an ark for you and your family. It, it was for him and his legacy. It was for him and his future. What God is calling you to build is not just for you. It's, whatever, it's, about, it's about what you're going to birth. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, you look pregnant. That's going to be a little interesting for the conversation on the ride home. But, but tell your neighbor, say, you, you kind of look pregnant. You, you kind of look like you're filled with some greatness. Uh, uh, Lord have mercy. If there's a pregnant woman about to pop the, just that news, I'm sorry if I busted your bubble. Amen. But look at your neighbor and say, it's about what you're carrying. It's, a, it's about what you're carrying. You got to build it now for what you're about to carry. God is saying, raise, rise up and build because, because there's a future coming. And I don't want your tomorrow to catch you by surprise. I, I wish I could just say I came from the future. And, and I want you to get ready now because if you wait to get ready tomorrow, you're going to miss what God has already released over your life. There is a blessing coming over this house, and now is the time to get ready. Wow, I feel the anointing today. He says, I want you to build this now so that when you die, what you gave birth to won't die with you. God is calling you to build something that's bigger than you. And every time God calls you to do something, it doesn't match your educational accomplishments. It might not match your bank account. It might not match what you're able to do. But God says, I want you to get ready now because you're not going to die with this inside of you. The enemy will not abort what he has placed inside of you, what God has placed inside of you. Look at your neighbor and say, it's bigger than you. Build it now because what you build now is going to carry you into your future. My God in this house, build this for your house. Men of God in this house, lead your family, build your family. It starts in the house. It starts, I don't know why the Lord is placing this in my spirit, but I need every father and mother to start doing your own little agape churches in your living room. Start teaching your children how to pray. Start teaching them how to read the Bible. Start put, put the YouTube to the side and turn off Netflix for a moment and start getting holiness back into your house and start teaching them how to put God first in your house. How? Don't throw your kids at agape and say, fix my kids. No, it starts in your house. It starts in your house. Hear this. Some theologians say that it took approximately about, about 120 years for the ark to be built. And that's, that sounds about right because the normal lifespan back then was longer than you see people living today. Noah himself, the Bible says that he lived to be 950 years old before he passed away. Can you imagine sitting at the feet of a preacher that lived 950 years old? Just speaking wisdom and dust at the same time. Just experiences after experiences. 950 years old. He was about 600 years old when the floods Happen. That's a long, look at him and say, that's a long time. And maybe there's a Noah here today that God has told you with an urgency, start building, but you don't see why you're building. Because what God said takes longer than what you expect. There's a Noah here today that you're waiting for a promise that has been declared over your life. 
There's mothers that are praying for their children. It is taking longer than expected. Their husbands praying for their wives. There's men of God and women of God putting God first, saying, I remember that you told me. I remember you declared this word over me in the 80s and in the 90s and in the early 2000s. And, and 10 years have passed and nothing. 20 years have passed and nothing. 40 years have passed and nothing. I dare to say that some people are, are waiting for God to manifest his promises 60 years. But I came to let you know today today that God has not forgotten about what he spoke over you and over your family. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. You keep praying. You keep holding on. You keep trusting in God. You keep placing him first. Those that are watching, keep holding on. I know it doesn't make sense. I know you don't like what you see. I know that it seems like the enemy is sounding a little right, but God told me to tell you the devil is a liar. And if God said it, it will come to pass. No matter how long it takes, no matter how long it takes, no matter how hard it looks, no matter how difficult the situation, I feel the Lord speaking to somebody to say you're closer to your breakthrough than you think. You keep holding on. Stand on the word of God because God did not bring you this far yet. I know they're sick. I know that they're broken. I know it looks ugly, but God... God says the uglier it gets the more glory God receives I feel something breaking in the atmosphere look at your neighbor say neighbor the longer you wait the bigger the blessing is there anybody here that you've been waiting a long time is there anybody here you've been crying a long time? Is there anybody here that you've been frustrated with God? But God says, I didn't bring you this far. I didn't forget about you. I'm not going to abandon you. The bigger the blessing is, the longer you might have to wait. But God says, I have not forgotten. Be seated. I'm almost there. The more time it takes to prepare the greater the breakthrough is. And this breakthrough is not singular. This breakthrough is plural. What God is about to do is not to you, is for you and through you. Can I say that one more time? What God is about to do is not to you, is for you and through you. The enemy meant to attack you, but God says, I'm using it to bless you so that you can become a blessing. Is that, that, that's, these are the people that the enemy is a little intimidated about. Because when you're blessed, you're only blessed. But when you have a plural blessing, blessing where God is doing it for you and through you the moment you are blessed everything connected to you is blessed if I eat everybody in my house eats if I'm healed everybody's gonna take what's dripping off of me God does not want to fill your cup he wants to overflow your cup he'll fill you for you but he'll overflow you for your mother for your father for your children every look at your neighbor's say my whole house is gonna feel what God gave me you're gonna feel every piece of what God gave this right here I feel something breaking in the atmosphere. That's why the enemy's been trying to destroy you because you're a plural Christian. You're not, you're not a singular Christian. What God did in you, he's going to do through you. And the devil don't like it. But the, my mother used to say, if they don't like it, que se muelda un ojo. For my Spanish-speaking people, it might make sense, but it doesn't sound right in English. But if the devil don't like it, so what? I don't care. Somebody say, that's me, that's me, that's me. Can I tell you something that you might know and some of you probably might not know? Here's what I want to tell you. You probably didn't know this, but God has been preparing you for what he's about to do in your life your whole life. 
Can I say that again? God has been preparing you for what's about to happen your whole life. He's been preparing you since you were a child. The enemy's been trying to mess with you since you were a child. There's people that's close to you that you haven't even opened up your mouth over what has happened to you as a child. But God says, I'm using that to minister to other people. They used you. They abused you. They might have fondled you. They might have raped you. They might have talked bad about you. They might have abandoned you. But God says, I was there. Your pain was my pain. But what I'm about to do now is let the enemy know and serve notice to hell that they are closer. They are closer. They are closer to building what's about to hold them up. Not only did God prepare you for this, God preserved you for this. He preserved you. What you, what you, what you went through, you had to go through it. Look at Jim and say, you had to go through it. You had to go through. You had to go through that pain. They, they had to leave you. The worst thing to do is hold back what God is telling you to release. Because you're prolonging the blessing that God has for you. You ever seen that meme on Instagram where the little girl lost a baby teddy bear? And God says, give me that teddy bear. She was actually holding the teddy bear. And, and Jesus says, give me that teddy bear. And she was hesitant. But in back of Jesus was a huge teddy bear. This is what God is saying. If you keep holding on to that little thing, you are discounting yourself from receiving something greater. My God. Look at your neighbor and say that you had to go through it. They had to leave you. You had to go through a period of loneliness. You, you had to. You had to. That season in your life where you almost died and, and you almost lost your faith. You almost, you almost went through a breaking point. You almost lost your mind. I came to let somebody know. I know it's a, it's, a, it's a dark season in your life. I know it's actually an embarrassing season of your life. But God has a way of using that ugliness to pull out some beauty. God is able to take strength from your weakness. He's able to take light from your darkness he's able to take blessing from the curse he's able to do it it had to happen and I want to let you know what I hear the Lord saying for me for agape today God will not waste your pain God will not waste your pain my God that was for somebody in this house would you just minister to your neighbor place your hand over their shoulder and say I know it hurt baby but God will not waste it God will not waste it he's gonna use your tears he's gonna use your depression he's gonna use that anxiety all that is within me the Bible says if that stuff is in you all that is within me bless 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 his holy name if you got something that you don't like on the inside of you God says I have a way of using that for my glory somebody open up your mouth and bless his name God won't waste your pain. He'll stretch you. He'll test you. He'll break you. And then he'll bless you. It, 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 it was just getting you ready. It was just getting you ready. Because the greater the legacy will be in your life, the earlier you got to start getting ready for it. Mm. Look at Jim and say, get ready. If you don't get ready now, you're only delaying what God wants to do. Getting ready means you got to get out of your comfort zone. Getting ready means that you can't put it on your calendar and once it comes, you, you, you hit the snooze button. No, stop snoozing. Stop, stop, stop snoozing. Stop, stop, stop losing this. I feel a divine urgency for the house. I feel a divine urgency for the people of Agape. That there's no time to waste. How is your prayer life for real? Don't even answer it. How is your prayer life for real? I've been pastoring for over a decade now. Mm, the first time I preached here was 2007. I was nervous the way I am right now. And, uh, and I remember that, that there's been times in my life, even as a pastor, that I preached more than prayed, taught more than prayed, counseled more than prayed, traveled more than prayed. 
ran up and down more than prayed. And if I was honest with myself, my prayer life was cold. And if I'm honest, even right now, if you allow me to crucify myself, I can't have a better prayer life even now. I can always pray more. We don't like that. Israel holiness coming. All of these powerful Kirk cars coming. We all come to the church. But if the pastor says, uh, we canceled everything, that day is going to be prayer service. Burr, burr. <laughs> is Kirk Carr going to help pray? No, he's not. He's not going to help pray. Everybody loves, everybody loves praise. Everybody loves revival. But we forgot how to go back to the old school. Hallelujah. And get on our knees again. And live holy unto the Lord. And come up to the house of God. They taught me when you come to the when you see me coming, I come in and I pray with my whole family. My son prays. My, they taught me that when you come to God's house, you don't talk to nobody. Get on your knees and put it in God's hand first. How is your prayer life? I, 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 hear, I hear the Lord say, start praying again now. Start serving now. Some of you need to be healed and you're waiting for healing. But if you start serving in the church, serving can heal your heart. That was for somebody right here. Walk in faith now. Invest in what God is about to do. Here's the interesting part. God says, I want you to get ready for something. Number one, not that it's going to take, not only it's going to take longer than expected. Number two, it's, it's going to be something that you've never seen before. He says, I want you to get ready and build an ark because rain is coming. And the, the issue is that back then in Noah's time, rain did not even exist. It never rained back then. There was a mist that came from the floor that watered the, the plants and the vegetation. Rain never existed. Hebrews 11 and 7 says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not seen. He said, Noah, I can hear the conversation now. Yes, Lord, I want you to build an ark. Got you. Give me some gopher wood through Amazon Prime. Bring it to the house. And I'll make it happen with my kids. Amen. What am I building an ark for? I want you to build an ark for rain. What in the world is rain? Uh, rain was never seen before. It never rained before. It never rained before. That's why Noah must have looked like a fool preparing for something so great for something that has never even been seen yet. Now, the Bible never says that people made fun of Noah, but there's some liberty to understand that there was probably people looking at him with his family, canceling their trip to Disney to build a boat where there is no water. What you're doing is obeying God, but in the eyes of the world, you look foolish. And if you're waiting for confirmation that you're walking towards God, don't even wait for church people to tell you. Listen to what the world tries to define you. You will never be friends with the world. We ain't, we ain't called to be like them. They will look at you and think you are a fool because God never makes sense. Can I free somebody here today? Stop trying to calculate God. Stop trying to understand him. Stop trying to, to put the pieces together. God never makes sense. He's making faith. And he's waiting for someone to simply say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Even if they're making fun of me. Even if they're talking about me. Even if they're looking at me funny. I'm going to keep hammering away i'm gonna keep hammering away i'm gonna keep working i'm gonna keep hustling let your hustle drown out the haters hate if you stop working you're gonna listen to what they're saying and i don't want to listen to what they're saying because they have an assignment to distract me from what god has called me to do i've been through too much to stop what i've started look at your neighbor and say keep working keep praying keep hammering 
wandering away. Drown out their judgment. Drown out their doubt. This is when you got to encourage yourself because if you don't, people's criticism will make you doubt even if you heard God in the first place. Doubt is the beginning of unbelief. What the enemy uses to destroy you is doubt. You mean to tell me that God spoke to you so clear and so profound all of these years and now where you're putting your money where your mouth is, now that you're, a, that you're about to start your business, now that you're about to write your book, now that you're about to move into a new level, into a new dimension that's going to bring wealth to you and your children, now that you're about to get out of the boat, Peter, you're going to listen to haters saying, I don't think you're qualified to do that. Even if you're not qualified, God called you anyway. We heard that so many times. God doesn't qualify the call. He, he doesn't call the qualified, rather. He qualifies the call. You might not have money for this, but keep hammering away. You might be listening to what they're saying against you, but keep hammering. I could imagine Noah saying, I know I heard God. I know I heard God. I could imagine Noah saying, I know I, I believe in God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the word. I still turn to you, God, even if I'm the only one. I could imagine Noah remembering what his father would say. Do you know that Noah's great-grandfather's name was Enoch and Enoch didn't even die the Bible says that Enoch walked with God so closely that God just took him and they're walking till today in heaven you know the Bible speaks about Enoch in the book of Jude verse 14 and 15 only one chapter in there and it states that Enoch was a preacher of righteousness and it also says that Enoch was a prophet of God. So he preached and he prophesied. And the first people that he must have preached to and prophesied was to his son Methuselah and to his grandson Lamech and to his great-grandson Noah. I'm not sure how theologically correct I am, but if he lived a long time and if Noah lived 950 years of age, maybe he was a little baby while, while Enoch was still walking. And I could imagine that Enoch would take Noah over his, over his lap and tell him one day, when you grow up and I'm not going to be here I want you to see how I walk with God I want you Noah to see how I talk with God I want you Noah to see how I trust God I want you Noah to see how I love on him because there's going to be a day that I won't be here there's going to be a day that Methuselah won't be here there's going to be a day that your dad Lamech won't be here and there's going to be a time that you're going to remember it's going to get hard and I want you to remember that if great granddaddy did it and if granddaddy did it and if daddy did it you can do the same thing remember what God has done in your life remember what God has done I declare in the name of Jesus that the mantles that the Lord has placed in your family lineage is going to be laid on you in the name of Jesus I declare in the name of Jesus almighty God that, the, that, that every generation of curses will have to be destroyed and replaced with generational blessings lift up your hands and say let every generational blessing fall on me now in the name of Jesus now in the name of Jesus would you stand to your feet I have to come to a close here I have to come to a close here but while Noah was hammering away drowning out the words of doubt Drowning out the family's confusion. Sometimes your family might not even understand what God has called you to do, and you have to learn how to cast vision. While he's doing that, hear this. I can't help but to use my imagination. He hit that nail with that hammer, and all of a sudden, a raindrop hit that piece of wood. He hit that hammer again, and all of a sudden, raindrop hit his shoulder. There's a hater down there saying, Noah, you look like a fool. All of a sudden, a raindrop hit right his eye. And you keep working, rain is coming. I hear 
It might not come when you want it to come. It might not come like a, like, like, like a raging river, but, but I came to let you know that rain is coming. It's coming. I hear the abundance. My God. Is there anyone that could have faith with me? I hear the abundance of, of rain. I'm, I want to be obedient, Lord. But every time I hit that hammer for my family, Lord, let the rain come and shut the haters. I don't want to try to convince anyone. Let the rain speak for itself. I, 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 know, I know my family has never seen this before. Uh, I want to prophesy over this. I, I want to prophesy because rain came. They never seen rain before. That means that through your obedience, you're about to see God do something in your life that your family has never seen before. Look at your neighbor and say, success is coming. It's over your house. Hope is coming to replace hopelessness. There's going to be some haters found. There's going to be some haters, Agape, that they'll say, I've never seen this before in your family. But God has called you and chose you and separated you. And he is going to bless you for your sacrifices. And there's rain coming over your life. Look at your neighbor and say, you've never seen it, but it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Look at your other neighbor and say, I'm going to be the first. I've never seen this blessing. I've never seen this is a new breed of blessing. I, I'm going to be the first. I'm going to be the first business owner in my family. So if that's for you, I want you to stand to your feet and begin to praise God for what God is saying over your life. I'm going to be the first homeowner in my family. I'm going to be the first author in my family. I'm going to be the first world changer in my family. I'm going to be the first one that don't quit what I started in my family. You're going to be the first one that doesn't get divorced. You're going to be the first one that has a child. You're going to be the first one that has joy that depression cannot steal. You're going to be the first that won't let worry take a hold on you. Somebody lift up your hands. I feel a move of God. I feel a river of God flowing over agape. I feel a river of God flowing over agape. It's about to rain, and I'm going to position myself to receive what God has prepared for me. I hear it. I smell it in the air. The clouds are accumulating. Every hater, watch out. Every blesser, get ready and position yourself because what's about to hit me is about to hit those that are connected to me. Somebody say rain. Somebody say rain. Now on me. Rain now on me. Somebody give God some praise. Like if you lost your mind for the rain. For the rain. Praise God here. It's about to start raining in your house. Praise God here. It's about to start raining over your finances. Praise God now. He's about to start raining in your cubicle. Praise God now. He's about to start raining over your business. Rain, God, rain. Come on, come on. For these next 10 seconds, praise God for the rain that's about to saturate, the rain that's about to fill, the rain that's about to lift up. Rain, Lord. If, if, I, was, if I was a younger preacher, man, I would stay right there and milk it as much as I can and just put the microphone down and say, I feel satisfied that I preached the message. I would do that, but I can't. I can't. Every preacher wants to finish with a high, a climactic ending. I want to, but I can't. I can't. You know why? Because there's, there's going to be a downer here that I have to leave you with. I'm sorry, but it's, it's not a downer. It is a word of warning. I want you to, I want you to understand, just a moment ago, we... We're praising God for the rain because rain means that there's blessings coming. Rain, rain means that there is food.
fruitful things that are going to be watered and there's growth and there's life and there's commerce and there's expansion. There's multiplicity. I, I love that. I love that. But allow me to turn your mind into another direction because rain would only be a blessing to Noah if he got ready for it. Those that did not get ready, a blessing would have been a burden. Hallelujah. He said, prepare the ark and I'll prepare the rain. But whether your ark is prepared or not, the rain is still coming. And many of us are shouting and sowing seed and dancing and speaking in tongues all the while still not preparing your ark. And that's why there's a lot of church hurt. And there's a lot of pastoral hurt. And there's a lot of people that are angry with God because it rained and they were not ready. Have you been mad at God because he was faithful to his word but because you did not get ready it burdened you rather than blessed you don't let it rain and you not be ready hallelujah my eyes cannot be focused on the stuff my eyes cannot be focused on the rain Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Stop focusing on the blessing. The blessing is going to come. It's going to come. But every blessing has to be encapsulated with a vessel that needs to be prepared. Stop praying for the oil and start praying for your vessel. Because if your vessel's not ready, the oil is going to drip. And I don't want to lose what's so precious. Looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I want to do an altar call for those that are getting ready for the rain. I want to do a quick altar call for those that are still preparing. If that's you today, if there's a Noah here today, I want you to excuse yourself out of your aisle and come down to this altar. I feel the presence of God in this house. Every step that you take coming into this place, I want you to get ready for rain and I want you to get ready to build. Get ready, get ready, get ready to build, get ready to build. My eyes are not focused on the things, my eyes are focused on God. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Can I tell you something, Agape? We are in the days of Noah. And Jesus is our ark. It's not the blessings. It's not the denomination or organization. Jesus is your ark. My prayer life is my communication with the one that is the ark of my salvation. Of my salvation. There we, would you take your neighbor by the hand? And would you squeeze life into that hand? I want to do two prayers. I want to pray for those that are here right now, and I'll pray for those that are, are feeling the tug of the Holy Spirit to get into the ark. Don't be like those that were not Noah's family that waits for the rain. Don't die without Jesus, man. Don't die without him. Don't try to do this by yourself. Don't let pride get in the way, my brother and my sister. Don't let what they did in your other church and how they offended you hold you back. Man offended you. Women offended you. God never lets you go. So, Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for a fresh anointing right now. I thank you for chains being broken right now. I thank you for your spirit awakening the spirit within us awaken hunger awaken thirst 
awaken us, Lord, with the discernment of understanding how urgent we are in the times that we're living in. There's no time to fight over futile, insignificant things, foolish things. Keep our eyes stayed on you, the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord. We've been through too much to cry about the same thing. We've been through too much to use excuses of our what and who did what to us. Father, in the name of Jesus, awaken every giant that is inside of them. Awaken the woman of God. Awaken the man of God. I call you out of the grave now in Jesus' name. I call you out of the grave now in Jesus' name. I feel to do something. In 2009, I went to India and I told over 20,000 people to do what you're doing right now. I told them through the guidance and the instruction of the Holy Spirit to take their neighbor's hand and they're, they're doing, they did what you're doing right now and I know it might not make sense for you but it's going to make it's going to make faith for you right now I want you to do what the Lord has called me to do 2009 in India take that hand and squeeze life into that hand this might not make sense but I believe that there's a supernatural wind that's about to blow right now I believe that there's a supernatural river I feel something breaking in the atmosphere listen I know this this might sound crazy, but I'm going I'm to do what God told me to do. Agape, when I count to three, I want you to cry out fire. And I want the musicians to play a kind of music that we're going into war with. Are you ready? Everyone in the balcony and everyone by the flags from east to west, north to south. Everyone that's watching on the other side of that screen. I want you to get ready to be run over by the power of God. I want you to get ready to come into collision, into a collision with the anointing of the Spirit of God. Something is about to break. I keep seeing in my spirit a river running. I feel in my spirit a river running over this right, your people. Let the current of your power flow now. I declare healing over our bodies right now. I declare every ligament issue, every diabetical issue, every pain in your nervous system, every eye issue. I feel miracles about to hit this house. Wow, I feel an anointing in this place. Devil, loose your hold. Loose your hold. When I count to three, I want you to cry out fire. Are you ready? Are you ready? One. Shatabasayedebeshea. Two. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Prayer warriors at position. Prayer warriors in position. Prayer warriors in position. Three. Cry out fire. Power of God. Like in a dark place. 
place, but it is you that is the Father of lights. Do it, God, while I pray here. Move in my house while we worship. Move in my matrimony. Yes, 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 yes. might be somebody here there might be a Noah here tonight today that you have the equipment you have the space you have the help but you don't have the faith to start maybe there's a Noah here that you come to church you speak in Christianese you dress the part, you sow your seed like a good Christian, you do the shouting and you do the dancing, but you know in the heart of your hearts, honestly you know that if it rains, you're not ready yet. If it rains, you're not ready yet. If that's you today, if that's you today that you say, Lord, I, I need, I don't want to praise you, Jesus. I want to live for you. Or I want to live for you as well. Maybe somebody today, you've backslid. Life got in the way. You got hurt and you put your hammer down. And if you died today, you might not be too sure where you're going. Can I be plain with you? Can I be honest with you? There is a heaven and there is a hell. Whether you have a hard time believing that or not. Can I say something else to you? There is a God that loves you and there is a devil that wants to see you destroyed. The devil don't want to just steal you. He don't want to just steal from you. He don't want to just make you feel uncomfortable. No, he wants to kill you. He wants to pulverize you. He wants your soul. And you don't have to go to hell. Don't be in church and still go to hell. 
Don't speak in tongues and sow your seed and still go to hell. Don't look Christian and still not know him. If that's you today, right where you are, I want you to repeat this prayer. There's probably going to be a QR code somewhere on live that you can connect to. They'll be able to steer you in the right direction after you profess your faith. Your faith. I want those that are watching, if there's a Noah that's watching me now, I want you to connect with us right now. Don't leave for tomorrow what you can do right now. There might be some distractions. Get away from the room. Park to the side. Do what you got to do. This is life or death right now. This right now. You might not be able to catch this tonight. Get it now. It's you and God right there, right now. Wherever you are, Noah, wherever you are, wherever you are, and whenever you are, you might be catching the rebroadcast of this. The anointing is not limited to time. It's here now, wherever you are now. Would you bow your heads with me? Would you close your eyes? Would you repeat this prayer with me right now, wherever you are? Noah, if you're here and you're giving your life to Jesus, you're reconciling your life, repeat this prayer with us. Agape, would you help them out? Link up with them and repeat as, after me as well. Say, Lord God, I come before you recognizing I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. I lay it at your feet. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross. You shed your blood and you're washing my sins away. You've washed my sins away. I today accept you as my personal savior. I dedicate my life to you. Write my name in the book of life and I declare that I am saved by your grace through faith in Jesus name. Come on, celebrate Jesus all over the tabernacle. Thank you for watching. I trust that you were blessed by the message. And if indeed you were, would you do me a favor? Do all of us a favor. And I say thank you in advance. Take a moment right now and subscribe to our channel and share. And if in fact the message has blessed you, would you partner with us by sowing a kind and generous seed? Your partnership with us helps us to do what we do and spreading this gospel, good news of the kingdom to people everywhere. Thank you in advance and join us again next time.